This is Coattail and the third in a series term, Coattail's Officer Basic Course, designed to share some best practices for War of Rights for unit leaders and members. Our subject today is communication. Uh, what we've got here is failure to communicate. No after action review would be complete without the observation that communications can be improved. Any coordination to enact a plan requires communication, yet it can be difficult to manage. It is both extremely necessary and extremely difficult simultaneously. This holds true to War of Rights as well, regardless of whether it is public or private, and regardless of play style or rule set. To begin with, I want to draw your attention to this graphic of an X and Y axis to help illustrate communications from a unit commander's perspective. First, let's take a look at the Y axis, which displays the level of communication occurring with an optimal occurrence represented at zero. The bottom of the graphic represents too little or no communication, in which case no information is being transmitted. On the other end of the spectrum, we have too much communication, in which the level of noise is so much that it is impossible to process, let alone answer effectively, any communications due to an overload. In this case, the same result occurs, no communication. The goal should be to land at an ideal middle ground sufficient communication to conduct operations without ending up too low or too high to be effective. Next, let's take a look at the x-axis. It represents the two main groups that a commander must communicate with. On the right side, we have communications within the unit and the ability for the commander to direct their troops as needed. On the left side, we have communications with other units to coordinate actions to have greater effects than individual units can achieve on their own. Both are needed to conduct any operations. However, the more communications that occur for either side on the x-axis, there is a commiserate increase in the total communication noise that the commander must deal with. So, for example, an officer may be laying out specific guidance to their formation and game, with discussions among the troops about the orders. This raises the bar on the level of communication and perhaps lands at the ideal level. However, on, say, a third-party client service like SteamChat, another commander inquires about a joint action. If the initial commander does not end their discussion within the unit, the commander's attention is now split, and they may experience a communication overload as a result. In this case, he is unable to communicate with either party simultaneously and has to either remain frozen from the overload or have to shut off communications with one side to the detriment, in either case, to the overall operation. While I will discuss some methods to mitigate the impacts of multiple streams of communication, the recognition of this dynamic is the most important step to enable any mitigation strategy. Your bandwidth is limited, and it pulls in two contrary directions. One method to mitigate the impacts of communication overload is to alternate the means of communication. While this does not fully eliminate the impacts, Using alternative methods beyond speech can lessen their impact on your processing power. For example, if you need to give directions for your unit to march or form up, utilizing the officer tools to depict lines graphically in-game can save you the verbal need to instruct specifically where your troops need to form up or in what direction they need to march. This can also be used to direct fire, avoiding the need to specify directions. This can best be used for intra-unit communications or communications within your unit. Another method is reliance upon a secondary officer or your NCOs to handle mundane tasks with the line while you attend to other communications. This requires you to provide clear guidance for what you wish to occur and a trained NCO and officer corps to enact that guidance. However, many players are more than capable of filling these roles both within regimental matches and within pubs. Keep in mind your role as a junior leader and especially a soldier. Do not flood your commander with communications, especially if the information is redundant or frivolous. Timely communication can be key, but it needs to be transmitted in a succinct manner to allow them to make proper decisions and communicate effectively in response. Other vectors can also be used for inter-unit communications, or communications between units. There are a number of tools within the game to assist with this process. One is the use of the universal text chat. This can be used to coordinate base level planning and timing for certain actions. Although it is limited in how much can be conveyed in this format, and it may be missed by other commanders. 
However, initial agreement to keep the chat generally free of noise and to keep an eye on it can mitigate these potential drawbacks to its usage. Another method can be to rely on the timer to coordinate certain actions, such as movement or attacks, although this also requires prior coordination and agreement. Just as junior soldiers and NCOs need to discipline their level of communication within the unit to the commander, so too do commanders need to discipline their own communications with other units. Keep communications to the level needed to coordinate. Planning can and should occur, but keep in mind that speculations and constant verbalized streams of thought can be highly disruptive to not only the communication between units, but can disrupt unit commanders to effectively work within their own individual units. Remember, every time you are talking, it means that whoever is listening has minimal capacity to conduct any other communications. Make sure what you are saying is worth it. On the flip side, too little communication can be detrimental as well and commanders should keep other units up to date of essential information. This is an art rather than a science, but recognizing these forces can help commanders determine where they need to dial up or down communications to be effective as needed. A final word regarding runners. Certain events require only direct communication on the field without external sources. In this case, runners are often utilized to facilitate coordination between units However, one should be careful in their selection of a runner. It should be more than merely a person that can repeat what you have said, but rather this individual should understand your intent as commander and have a basic understanding of the general flow of the battle. If the runner doesn't really understand what is going on or how to communicate it, any message they deliver will not be made effectively and could even be detrimental. It should be someone trusted in your formation that can make themselves clear and return with a full understanding of whatever information they receive back. This can mean that perhaps you might be the best person to directly communicate with the other units. If it is at a point in the battle where you can safely leave the direction of your formation to a subordinate leader and or NCOs, you will need to determine when and if you can depart your line, but unless there is a major engagement or a critical movement, you should be able to do so more often than not. Those who are selected as runners should make sure that the communications they make are received and understood, and should always inquire if there is a return message that the other unit commander has for your unit. Using a runner takes a person out of the line. Make sure you get the most out of the exchange. These remedies may seem simple, but to paraphrase an overquoted Prussian, war, and war of rights, is very simple. But in war, the simplest things become very difficult. The same is true for communications. The key is to think about them deliberately, and to discipline your behavior accordingly. Utilize the mitigating tools available to you, and you will make the very difficult slightly less so. But what do you guys think of my analysis of communication and war rights and ways to improve on it? What did I get wrong and what did I miss? What methods do you use in game to try and communicate better both within your unit and with other units? Let me know below and thanks for watching. Is it possible to two youths? Uh, uh, to what? Uh, what was that word? Uh, what word? To what? What? Did you say Utes? Yeah, two Utes. What is a Ute? Oh, excuse me, Your Honor. Two Utes. <laughs>